Hello, I'm Katherine Rogers. I am the Associate Director and a lecturer in the Narrative Medicine program at Columbia University. Uh, so today I would just like to speak to you a bit about narrative medicine, what it is as practiced at Columbia, and the history of narrative medicine, and some of the programs that may be of interest to you right now. Narrative medicine is a specific form of medical humanities that was developed at Columbia University in New York about 20 years ago. I think that it started in the heart of Dr. Rita Sharon. She was a practicing physician at the time and she said to herself, you know, my patients come to me and they tell me my head, my eyes, my throat, etc. But there's something that I'm missing what am I missing? I am missing the story. A patient comes to me with a story and in medical school, Dr. Sharon said, I didn't study story. I studied the body, which is important. So Dr. Sharon went to the literature department at Columbia and she said, could you teach a doctor something about story? And they said, of course. Uh, could you help us with our prescriptions? And she said, of course. Well, Dr. Sharon uh, studied literature so seriously that she received a PhD in Henry James. And what happened was this. The literature professor, the ph a philosophy professor, a creative writer, uh, an expert in social justice, all came together around this developing practice. Because medicine does not exist in a vacuum. Medicine does not exist alone. Medicine exists in a world of many disciplines. And so narrative medicine began to develop this program or this system uh, where experts in uh, literature, how to understand the story, philosophy, uh, what does it mean to have a relationship of a self and other, the phenomenology, social justice, how does medicine exist in the world today with problems of the world, public health, creativity, um, I'm a writer, that's my specialty, creativity, ways of thinking beyond what we already know and to things that we might imagine. And so these professors all came together and they began to develop um, some systems to deliver this kind of experience into the medical world. So today at Columbia University, we have a very simple system, for example, of delivering this experience and practice to people in medicine and also people in the humanities. We gather together, for example, 10 of us around this table, we would look at a poem or a beautiful photograph, a piece of art, an excerpt from a novel. We'll put our heads together and everyone at the table will see something different. The literature professor will use the tools of literature. The philosophy professor will think about the self and the other. The med medical professor will look at it as a, a, a medical professional. And we'll all see something different and share what we see in this piece of art, the same way we might share what we see in the real world of medicine. We'll take some time to write and share our writing and our reflections. And we find that just this simple hour of a table of doctors or a table of scholars brings so much to the surface. It helps each of us to strengthen our own skills related to the delivery of good medicine, and it builds teamwork. We've also measured that this practice of narrative medicine has a calming and helpful effect and does have some results related to the wellness of clinicians and to mitigate burnout. These are just some of the results of narrative medicine. So narrative medicine over this 20 years has become a very strong practice centered at Columbia University, but now practiced all over the world. We do have an international committee now in progress, a core group of people from Europe and Asia. And we also have such programs as a weekend training workshop 
where people from all over the world can come to New York City for just a weekend and hear the lectures and put these uh, skills into practice themselves and carry these skills back home. We've also developed a master's degree in narrative medicine at Columbia University to train facilitators like me to deliver these programs of narrative medicine. And we have a CPA program, that's a Certificate of Professional Achievement, which is especially good for people who are already doctors, clinicians, and scholars who cannot leave home, but they want to participate virtually and then we deliver the training in narrative medicine via those programs. And another very important aspect of narrative medicine uh, is related to uh, medical education. At Columbia University, for example, now it is required of every medical student to take an elective, a, a chosen class, specifically in narrative medicine. And there we offer these doctors in training a choice of some creative or humanities pursuit they pursue for six weeks. We have playwriting, dance, film, uh, uh, theater, um, literature, and the, the students find that adding this aspect of training to their medical training really opens them up in, a very, in very special ways. For example, um, I teach playwriting to medical students, and I say to them, tell me, what does playwriting have to do with medicine? And they say, well, it helps me to put myself in the shoes of another. It helps me to imagine the world of another, for example, the world of my patient. And it helps me create teamwork among my colleagues as we create plays together. Uh, and. Um, also in the fourth year of medicine at Columbia, each student chooses a very special project with a mentor uh, related to narrative medicine. And we, we find that this cushion in their medical training is, well, of course I'm prejudiced, but I would say it's not just nice, but it's, it's essential to the delivery of good medicine. Personally, for me, as an artist, Narrative medicine has strengthened me in two ways. One is it's made me a better writer, a simpler, clearer writer, to be surrounded by these doctors and clinicians and philosophers and uh, to be in this interdisciplinary world. But also it's given me a sense of purpose in knowing that my creativity is contributing not just to anybody around the world reading it, but to, to physicians who are hands-on are helping people. So. It's been my pleasure to speak to you a little bit about narrative medicine as practiced and developed at Columbia University, New York. And I'm looking forward to the progress of narrative medicine here and all over the world. Today I am in France, and so to you I say, merci.